so today I'm going to talk to you about something. It's actually a little bit off what I usually do. So I'm a marketing professor. I typically study consumer behavior and the factors that affect people's decision to buy X over Y. Uh, but today I'm really talking about something that's a little bit more broader that I think can appeal to pretty much everybody in the audience, and that's the concept of busyness, right? So I'm going to show you a picture here of a busy person. Uh, how many people here can relate to this image? Okay, I can, a lot of you can, okay. So if you raise your hand, you're not alone. Particularly in the United States, business is pervasive, right? And I'm not just basing this on anecdotal evidence. There's actually some research that's looked at this, and actually one of my favorite studies on this um, is this study where uh, this researcher, what they did is that they happened to get their hands on, and don't ask me how they got this, but they happened to get their hands on several decades worth of greeting cards that people sent to their friends and family over the holidays. And they looked at what was in the content of those greeting cards spanning several decades. And so if you look in the 60s, the content is mostly, oh, our kids are great, we're doing this, X or Y, all long detailed descriptions of what's going on in their life. Suddenly, the descriptions get much shorter once you get to a few years ago, and all they're talking about is feeling time pressure, being busy, and got to go, right? And so what they found is that literally, over time, people's mentions of how busy they are has steadily increased, right? So this is something that is not only pervasive, but it's even getting worse, right? Now, why I research it is because I actually find that we have a kind of paradoxical relationship with busyness. So there's a lot of research out there that shows that when you're busy, you're stressed out, right? So 33% of Americans say that they have a hard time sleeping because they feel overwhelmed by their day, right? Over half of Americans report stress levels that are above what is considered to be healthy, and the number one contributing factor is that they're too busy, and so it's not surprising that if you actually ask ch American children what's the number one thing that they could change about their parents, it's not spending more time with them, it's just making them less freaked out, right? <laughs> That's basically it, right? So it's clearly a big issue, right? But the flip side to that is for many of us, business is seen as a positive thing, right? And a lot of this, I think, gets down to this in inherent desire that Americans have to kind of feel productive. And so there's research that shows that people just have an aversion to being idle. So as long as they have a justification for doing it, they'll choose being busy over just simply being bored, right? One of my colleagues actually in the marketing department who joined us a couple years ago, her name's Sylvia Beleza, um, she actually studies status and she actually found this interesting uh, paper, uh, she has this interesting paper on business where basically if you think about pro being productive and you know, people always wanting your time, you know, there's a sense of self-importance that comes with that, right? And so what they find is people, tend, people who communicate the fact that they're busy actually get kind of an enhanced social standing in the eyes of others and is a signal of how important they are to other people, right? And kind of not necessarily on busyness, but also related to this desire to be pr productive, another colleague, Ron Kivitz, um, basically had a paper where he was trying to figure out why would people want to stay in this ice hotel? So why would you spend hundreds of dollars to sleep in a room filled with ice where you're freezing your you-know-what's off and just to do it? Well, it turns out that people's desire to be productive is so prevalent that essentially they do this just simply so they could check something off their experiential CV. Right? So it's clearly an issue, right? Now what I'm gonna to talk to you about is actually what effect being busy or even feeling busy has on your productivity. And when I mean productivity, I'm talking about your motivation to do tasks, how long it takes you to do tasks, and whether or not you get things accomplished. Now I'm not the first person to look at this. There's a lot of literature on this. And in general what it finds is that the busier you are, the less effective you are at accomplishing tasks, you make more errors, you do a lot of different things that are wrong, right? But what I'm gonna show you, at least a couple studies or a couple papers I've been working on, that actually shows that under some conditions, both being busy and actually feeling busy can make you more productive, okay? So the first paper really looks at um, how busyness, how being busy or actually being busy, and what we mean by busy is how the number of tasks that you have, how that actually affects the time it takes for you to complete tasks, okay? Now, get, take you through an example. 
let's say it's September 6th, you look on your calendar, you decide that you want to pay a bill, that you have to pay your bills, right? Now, most people, if you work during the week, you're going to sit there, you're going to put it off till probably the weekend, right? So you're going to do it on the 9th, right? Now, the question I have, and nobody has to answer it, but um, what would happen if you had actually originally intended to do it the week before, right? So you had an initial deadline for the second, you missed that deadline, you're looking at it on the sixth, what would you actually do? When would you complete it? Well, somebody might sit there and say, well, I'm, I'm late on my deadline, I gotta get it done as quickly as possible. But actually, what my research and some other research has found is actually you're gonna postpone it, you're more likely to procrastinate on that, right? And what we find in this paper is not only are you more likely to procrastinate, but more importantly, what we find is that if you're busy when you miss that deadline, you're not gonna procrastinate. And actually, so what ends up happening is when you've missed the deadline, the busier you are, the quicker you are at completing tasks, so the more productive you are, right? Now, question is why? In order to understand this, I guess first we have to go back to understanding this. So when you miss a deadline, why do you kind of take longer or do you procrastinate, right? And the reason why this actually occurs is something that's called the what the hell effect, okay? Now, just to illustrate the what the hell effect, I'll just take you through an example. It's 10 o'clock at night, you're sitting on your couch, there's a bag of chips right next to you, you're trying to lose a few pounds, you don't want to eat those chips, but you're like, okay, I'll have just one chip, right? Next thing you know, you open up the bag, you have that one chip and the entire bag is gone, right? That's called the what the hell effect. And the basic idea behind it is that if you're trying not to do something or you set some sort of restriction on yourself or some limit, as soon as you violate that, it's psychologically painful, so you just kind of say what the hell and let it all go, right? So the what the hell effect's been shown in food a lot, right? Uh, we also see it a lot in alcohol and addiction and smoking behaviors. So somebody who, let's say, has quit smoking for several months would be really effective at it, but then they go outside, bum a cigarette from somebody, next thing they know, they're buying a pack a day afterwards, right? Um, I have some research on this that shows actually with credit card debt, when you incur credit card debt under some situations, it could actually lead you to spend more money, right? And then. The research that we have and also some previous research shows the same thing works with time management where when you set a deadline and you miss that deadline, you actually take longer to complete that task than if you hadn't completed, if you hadn't set a deadline to begin with, right? So deadline, what the hell effect kicks in, but what about when you're really busy? Well, what happens with really busy is your mind's thinking about something else. You're not thinking about failure, you're thinking about the fact that you're still getting stuff done. You're still being productive. Even if you're not actually being productive, you feel productive when you're busy. And so basically what happens is that sense of failure that people get from missing a deadline doesn't actually happen. And so the end result is that after people have missed a deadline, people that are busy are more motivated to do tasks and they actually take less time to complete tasks. Okay, so I'll show you some evidence for this. I'm not going to go into too much details, but I'd be more than happy to answer questions about these. So basically, in one study, what we did is something very simple. We just took a group of people and we said, hey, we would like you to kind of describe a task that you wanted to do last week. You didn't actually get it done and you want to do in the upcoming week. So it's a task you missed the deadline on and now you want to actually get it done, right? We then looked at their motivation to perform the task and we also measured how busy they were the previous week when they missed that deadline, right? And we found a rather, what we kind of expected, and you can see here, that the busier people were the previous week, the more motivated they were to do that task, right? So this is just kind of a self-report of motivation, but then we actually followed up with them a week later, and we said, did you actually complete that task? And we found the same pattern, right? And the, and the reason, and so the people who were busier the week before actually in the upcoming week completed the task, were more likely to complete the task because they weren't experiencing this what the hell effect, right? Now, we did another study with undergrads. We wanted to actually look at whether or not it would actually affect the timing or how quickly people could do a task after missing a deadline. And so what we did is we gave a, a bunch of undergraduate students, it's the, um, 
I would say, the chore of reading an academic article and then answering some questions about them. Now, if you've ever read an academic article, you know that this is a really bad chore. Extremely boring, I guarantee. Right? So we gave him the task. And what we did is, you know, we actually did this nice little trick where we actually had them self-impose a deadline on themselves. So we basically gave them some additional money if they completed it two days quicker, but they had the option to do it, right? So we gave them this sense that they had set a deadline for themselves, okay? And then we actually looked at, once they missed the deadline, how long it actually took them to complete the task, right? And so what we actually found is pretty consistent with what we previously saw. So this is how long it actually took to complete the task. And you can see the busier people were after miss, at the time that they missed the deadline, they actually turned in this assignment a few days quicker than the people who uh, were less busy at the time of missing the deadline, okay? And now the final thing I'll just show you, some people might be sitting there going, well, this is just stuff that you're doing in these lab studies and things like that. Are, is there any evidence for this in the real world, right? Well, so we actually partnered with a uh, task management software provider, um, and they were in startup mode, and we basically got essentially three years worth of data. And so what this is is kind of like a virtual outlook calendar, so we can see when people open a task, when they complete it, when they set a deadline for it, if they have to push the deadline back, any number of different things. And so we looked at this, and so we ended up analyzing about 28,000 users' data, a total of over half a million tasks. And what we actually found is that when people miss a deadline, the what the hell effect kicks in, so they take longer to complete the task. But the busier people were when they initially pushed back that deadline, the less time they actually had to complete the task, okay? All right, so that's just one project. One issue with this project is that it's really about being busy, so it's how many tasks you actually have to do. What I was interested in in this topic is really how feeling busy in the moment affects your motivation to do tasks, right? So what happens when you're actually feeling that busyness in the moment? Are you more or less motivated, okay? Well, as I said, there's been some research on this, and most of the research would suggest that when you're busy in the moment, you're gonna feel overwhelmed, right? You're gonna sit there and say, I have a heart, I'm not gonna be able to get everything done, and it's gonna impact your motivation, right? And while we do find that, right, we actually find some other things. So this research was initially investigated with three primary research questions in mind. So the first one is, as I said, rather than study how actually being busy is, we wanna look at how feeling busy affects your behavior? If so, can that explain some of the negative effects that people find on busyness? Second, is there a positive outcome to feeling busy? And then the final one is by understanding that, can we design interventions to actually make people more productive? Right? And the answer to this question, it turns out to be, and I hit the wrong button, yes in all three cases. And so I'll show you how we actually did this. So we basically propose that busyness has two effects, okay? There's a demotiva demotivating effect and a motivating effect. The demotivating effect is related to the what the hell effect, right? So remember with the what the hell effect, you failed, you give up on your goal. Turns out even if you kind of anticipate failure, same thing happens. And so in this case, if you become uncertain that you can get your tasks accomplished, you're gonna be less motivated to perform them and you're gonna feel overwhelmed. Now there's a flip side to this though. While there's uncertainty, another aspect of business is that business means that you can get a lot of stuff done. You can show your competence to, other, to both yourself and other people. And that often has a motivating effect. People wanna be, see themselves as competent, right? And so what we expect also is that you could have another positive effect. So what we find in this research is basically that generally uncertainty tends to reign and people, business, feeling busy lowers your motivation to perform tasks, but if we do a nice simple intervention to make people overcome their uncertainty, then business actually makes them more motivated to perform their tasks. And so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but I'll just show you briefly kind of how we tested this. So, I did a number of experiments with, with uh, 
undergraduates, regular people, a number of different populations. And the basic idea is we wanted to make them feel busy without actually having them perform any activity. So how do you actually do that? Well, advertising, I found, is a really effective way to influence people. And so we actually use ads to actually make people feel busy or not busy. So people that were not busy had to evaluate this ad that's for Seiko watches that talks about how they have all the time in the world, an empty calendar, the whole thing. And then the people that are busy are evaluating a similar ad, but clearly priming busyness. And we found this is actually a very effective way to make people feel busy. Uh, other times, we've actually just had people list three or 10 tasks on their to-do list. It does basically the same thing, right? So after we do this, we then, half the people got this intervention where we made them feel confident that they can complete their objectives. So how do you actually do that? Turns out there's actually a very simple trick to doing this. So there's a literature on mental simulation that basically says is if you have people imagine an outcome, they believe it's more likely to be true. So all we simply did is instruct people to briefly just simply imagine completing all the tasks on their to-do list. And that kind of brings them back, gets them over, overcomes that uncertainty, they become less freaked out, and therefore they become more productive, okay? So just to be clear, we basically have half the people feeling busy, half not. Some people receive nothing, no intervention, and then half of them receive the intervention. And so we have four different groups, and we looked at what effect our different manipulations had on people's motivation to do things like read that boring academic article, right? Whether or not they would actually go to the store to participate in the sale. So it's interesting, if we do this study and we have people participate in the sale online, we get no effects because you could just shop online really easy. But if you just have to go 15 minutes away to the store, people see that as enough of a difficulty that we get some of these effects, right? Even it affects people's willingness to pay for gift cards where they have to go in store, right? But basically what we find is the same thing in pretty much all of our studies is that people that don't receive the intervention, the blue bar is the motivation for the people that feel busy. The light blue bar is the people that don't feel busy. So if you don't get this intervention, business lowers your motivation. However, people that receive the intervention business increase their motivation to perform tasks. Okay? And then the final study I'm going to show you just deals with one final question, which is now that we know this, is it possible that we can make busier people more productive? Right? And that's the basic goal. And so essentially what we did is that we took people, we measured how busy they expected to be, and either did or did not instruct them on this intervention that we created. So we had people... Uh, participate in the study where they listed up to 20 tasks that they wanted to get done during the day. So we just kind of let them self-select whether or not they were busy. People listed anywhere from two tasks all the way up to 20, right? We then instructed them to either mentally simulate. So we basically said throughout this day, if whenever you feel busy, please think about successfully completing your tasks, right? The other half did not get that intervention. And essentially the next day, we showed them that same to-do list that they had showed us before. We had them mark off which ones they actually got completed. And here's what we found. So the people that were not busy, so these are people that didn't list a lot of tasks, we really just find, you know, they complete about 72% of their tasks, but there's really no difference between the people that were given the instructions about the busyness versus not. However, the people that were busy, telling them to overcome their uncertainty by mentally simulating their tasks, it actually made them be more productive. Just so I'm clear about what this is showing you, these are the percentage of tasks that people actually completed compared to the ones that they listed the day before. So it's kind of the likelihood they would complete a task, right? And so this is the pattern that we found. And so just as a takeaway, just to conclude, and I'd love to take questions, I just want to say, you know, if you want to feel productive, don't bother to stay in an ICE hotel. All you have to do is keep yourself busy and just overcome your uncertainty and you actually will be more productive. Okay? Thank you very much.